Awesome, awesome, awesome. I guess we're ready to get started again. We're ready to get it popping. We're ready to do some man. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Let's go ahead and take a look at this handout. Sorry, I'm over here grabbing my supplies and stuff. Let's go ahead and get ready for part two of this a little bit. A little bit of harder questions. You know, let's go straight to number. I mean, I really want to hit number 11 here, okay? I want to hit number 11 because number 11 is a problem that has to do with fractions, okay? And a lot of times people freak out with that kind of stuff, okay? So let's hit our workspace, all right? You know, that was from the previous video. Let's go ahead and, you know, a little bit of harder questions, right? Let's go a little bit of harder questions. And we'll be able to do the work here, okay? Be able to do the work, all right? So same old, same old, okay? Remember, we're, we're going to be working backwards, so we are going to be using PEMDAS here, okay? That stuff never goes away. To be honest, pretty soon, I'm probably not going to write PEMDAS anymore. Because technically, the P stands for parentheses. But in high school, we don't really use a P. We actually use a little G, okay? So, you know, we're going to put the G up here instead. Yeah, we call it GEMDAS in high school. Because the G stands for grouping symbols, okay? So it's not just parentheses. It's about brackets. It's about fractions, maybe square root symbols, different symbols that may have work inside, okay? So I'll go ahead and just throw it out there. It's GEMDAS for the grouping symbols, okay? Of course, we got parentheses, but we may see some brackets, some braces, okay? And I'm sorry that my braces aren't the best in the world. And other things like that. Even the square root symbol, if there's work inside, is a grouping symbol. Even a fraction bar that has work in either the numerator or denominator, that's a grouping symbol, okay? But anyways, let's go ahead and start looking at this problem here, okay? We're going to do same steps, same steps, all right? We're going to go ahead and drop our line straight down from the equal sign, okay? Remember... Our multiplies and divides get circled because those are brother and sister as well as the add and subtract, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this here, okay? We got ourselves half y minus 1 8 equals to 7 8, okay? So I hope you notice, kind of like the other problems here, we're still going to have to start from the bottom and work our way up the order of operations. We're working backwards. The first thing we see in this problem is a subtraction, and I hope you see it. We're going to have to undo that by adding one-eighth to not just one side, but to both sides, okay? Check it out here. We got negative one-eighth. We got positive one-eighth. Guess what? They cancel out. They're both gone. They're done. They're done here. Let's go ahead and do the other side here, though. We got seven-eighths plus one eighth. Okay, I'm going to write it out out here. And I'm also going to make sure that I write down the rule. When you are adding or subtracting fractions, they need to be the same denominator. That's only when adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, I'll even put it up here. Adding slash subtracting fractions. Okay, if you're adding or subtracting fractions, they better be the what? The same denominator, okay? They better be the same denominator. But in this problem, we do have the same denominator. So how do we add them? Well, the denominator stays the same, okay? That's why they got to be the same denominator. But I hope you notice that this problem, 7 plus 1 equals to 8. This is what we got to do. We're going to do 7 plus 1 to make the, the numerator, okay? That's how we do it, all right? So we got 8 over 8. And some of you may be able to realize that 8 over 8 is the same as the number 1, one whole, okay? So that's the thing here is that sometimes we see a fraction, we already freak out. Let's not freak out. Let's go ahead and just see if we can do the work, and it might clean itself up, okay? Just like it did right now. So notice, 7 eighths plus 1 eighth, we just saw right here, it made 8 over 8, which is the same as one whole. So I'm just going to put a one whole on the right side of the equation. The equal sign goes in the middle, and we bring the rest of this straight down. We have half times y times y. And I'll even put the little time symbol there because I want to make sure that we understand how to do this, okay? 
All right. We're multiplying by a fraction. So we're going to need, need to use, and I'm going to bust it out, the good stuff, the reciprocal, okay? Anytime that you're multiplying by a fraction, to undo it, we're going to use, and let me highlight it. Let me make it look nice and good with my little pink highlighter. Yeah, buddy. We're going to need to use the reciprocal. That's what we need to use, okay? That's what we need to use. Well, let's see it in action. Let's see what are you talking about, Mr. Legal. Okay, so we got one half, okay? The reciprocal means we're going to flip the fraction over, okay? So that one half, the reciprocal would be 2 over 1, okay? Notice, I'm going to be multiplying by 2 over 1, and I hope you see it. I hope you see it. These end up canceling each other out, okay? The opposite of multiplying by a fraction is to multiply by the reciprocal, okay? That's the vocabulary, okay? But I hope you see it. Whatever we do to one side, we got to do to the other side, okay? We got to do to the other side. Notice I'm putting two over one because, you know, that's the flipped fraction. We have a whole number on the right side. Well, anytime we have a whole number and we need to multiply with a fraction, we put the whole number over one and we multiply straight across, okay? That's how we multiply fractions, okay? So let's finish this off. We have Y gets brought down on the left side. Y is still Y on the left. Equal sign in the middle. Let's get the numerator. One times two makes two. That's the numerator right here. This part right here at the top. Let's figure out the denominator. One times one makes one. And two divided by one, well, we simplify it. Our correct answer is y equals two, okay? Could you put y equals two over one? You sure can. It's the same answer, okay? But we got to make sure we could explain and we understand the steps we're using, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. Let's do some more practice and let's see if we could handle some of these problems. Let's look at number... 12. 12 is another problem where we where we are going to use the multiplicative inverse, multiplying by the reciprocal, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that problem here, okay? Let me bust it out right here. Let me go ahead and make it a little big bigger. Let me make it big bigger. <laughs> anyways, anyways, whatever. Okay, number 12, negative 32 minus... Three fifths times F equals to negative 17. Okay. This one's going to be a good problem here. Okay. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Same thing. We are going to use gamdas. Okay. And don't freak out. Oh, Mr. Elgado, he's not saying pemdas anymore. Oh, my God. I'm going to freak out. Don't freak out. It's okay. Remember, gamdas, pandas, same thing. The P for parentheses now stands for grouping symbols, okay? But it means the same thing. I hope you understand this problem. Again, we are working backwards, okay? We are working backwards because the variable is surrounded by other operations, okay? I hope you see it, okay? I hope you see it. All right, let's take a look here, okay? First things first, we're going to drop that line straight down from the equal sign. That does not go away, all right? We have two terms on the left side. I hope you see it, and I'm using a vocabulary word. I'll even write it down. We have two terms on the left side of the equation. We got two things we could worry about here, two things we could look at here, okay? Two things, okay? So in this problem, we got ourselves, and I'll just do a quick little highlight. We got ourselves negative 32, all right? And we have negative 32 connected with or being combined with negative 3 fifths F, okay? That's what I mean by the terms. There are two different things we got going on the left side. On the right side, we got one term. It's just a constant. It's negative 17. But I just wanted to kind of point this out, okay? Now, in any case... We're looking at the left side of the equation. I hope you see we do have an add or subtract because we're starting from the bottom and we're working our way up. We do have an add or subtract, but you need to be careful. People mess this up. 
we are combining negative three-fifths. We're combining this with negative 32. We're putting them together. We need to undo the negative 32. The opposite of negative 32 is positive 32. And that technically will be the first step in this problem, okay? We need to cancel out that negative 32. And to do it, we're going to add 32 to both sides, okay? So first things first, our 32s on the left side, that yellow highlighter, they actually cancel out. They make a zero pair. They are gone. So we're going to bring the rest of this straight down. We got negative 3 fifths F, all right? And that equals two. Now we got to do some work on the right side. Are they the same sign or different signs? I hope you see it. They are different signs. That means we need to find the difference, okay? That means we need to find the difference, okay? I hope you see those two things right here. We got positive 32. We got 32 positives and we have 17 negatives. What do we have more of in this problem? We have more positives. That means your answer will be positive. We got to find a difference. We're going to do 32 minus 17 because that's what we see for the absolute values of the numbers on the right side. 32 is a larger one, so we put it on top. 17 is a smaller absolute value, so we put it at the bottom. And we're going to cancel out some of these positives and negatives, okay? So really what happens when we regroup, we borrow 12 minus 7 is 5, and 2 minus 1 is 1. We should end up with positive 15, okay? But don't, you know, don't be shy. Use your calculator if you got to. We could always go ahead and put negative 17. Notice the green one right here. It's right here, negative 17. Then we could put plus 32, and we get positive 15. Same thing, same thing, okay? All right, we're getting there. We're getting super close here, okay? Notice, we are multiplying the F by a fraction, negative three-fifths. So to cancel it out, we're going to multiply by the, and I'm going to write it here again. I'm going to write it here so we could use that vocabulary. I'm going to multiply the left side by its reciprocal, okay? So notice, the five becomes a numerator. Three is now the denominator. And then negative states the same. Still, we're going to still have that negative, okay? We're still having negative. Sorry, I had a little hiccup right there. <laughs> Sorry. But whatever we do to one side, we got to do to the other side, okay? So let me get erase the little plus sign real quick. I'm going to go ahead and put the time symbol down. I'm going to put the five as my numerator. Three is denominator. We could put the negative symbol out in front. And notice on the right side, it's a whole number times that new fraction. What we're going to do is put the whole number over 1. Okay, we put it over 1. And we're good to go. And we are good to go, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look here, okay? On the left side of the equation, these fractions, the negative 5 thirds and the negative 3 fifths, cancel each other out. They're gone. It's the multiplicative inverse property. It basically creates one. When you multiply it out, it creates one. And on the left side of the equation, we are left with one F. That's what's left on the left side, okay? We got to do the work on the right side of the equation. So let's go ahead and get that. We got 15 over one times five over three. Let, well, let's worry about that negative in a little bit, okay? So let's do this work here, okay? So how do we get the numerator? When multiplying fractions, we multiply straight across, okay? That's when multiplying fractions. Let's go ahead and set it up. I'm busting out my calculator because, hey, yo, we could use it. For function is a great tool to make sure our computational work is on point, okay? So we're going to do 15 times 5. My numerator is 75, okay? The denominator is kind of easy, you know, 1 times 3. We can look at the multiplication chart for that bad boy. Or 1 times 3 is 3, indeed, indeed. So we have 75 thirds, all right? And we're almost done. Remember, this one was a positive, okay? The 15 over 1 was positive. 
the negative five thirds. Notice how I put the negative in front. A positive times a negative. These are different signs when multiplying. They're different signs. So our answer will be negative, okay? So our answer is negative 75 over 3, all right? So we put the equal sign. Now look, some of you may want to go ahead and change this to a decimal. Since our problem doesn't have any decimals here, I would actually say we don't need to change it into a decimal. We don't need to because there's no, you know, we don't need to worry about that stuff. So I do want to just check to make sure, you know, we could type 75 divided by 3, you know, because if it's a decimal, we leave it as a fraction. But what is 75 divided by 3? We hit equals and notice we get a nice clean whole number. And it makes sense because 3 quarters is 75 cents. 3 times 25 is 75. So over here where we have negative 75 over 3, well, 75 divided by 3, we just saw was 25. I busted out my calculator, and you could see it right here. But notice in my calculator, I put positive 75 divided by 3. My answer is not going to be positive because if I really set it up correctly, a negative divided by a positive is always a negative. As you can see at the bottom, different signs, negative. So our correct. Final answer, even with the crazy fractions and the negatives, at the end of the day, the fraction cleaned itself real nice, and we are left with F equals negative 25. And that's an amazing answer here. And that's, that's the work here, okay? That's the work here, guys. So let's be able to do these problems. I know it feels difficult, but with practice, we always get better. Remember, hard work always always pays off. All right. Hope you guys have a good one.